A numerical pattern is called a sequence. Okay, you've been doing sequences for years. So a simple one would be one, two, three, four. That's a numerical pattern. And this dot, dot, dot means a pattern continues. A sequence which increases or decreases by the same number is called an arithmetic sequence. Okay, so we usually pronounce this word arithmetic, but when we're talking about sequences, we use arithmetic. The number it increases or decreases by is called the common difference. So this will be called common difference. So difference in math means to subtract. So to get the common difference, what you do is you take the second term and subtract the first term. So the common difference in this sequence right here is going to be 1 because if you take 2 minus 1, you're going to get 1. Also, you could take 3 minus 2 and get 1, 4 minus 3. So the differences have the same number in common. That's why it's called common difference. So when we talk about arithmetic sequences, we have what we call an explicit formula and a recursive formula. So the ex explicit formula of a sequence is a sub n. So that's a subscript n. This n means the nth term. So if you want to, it, um, it's going to be a sub n equals a sub 1. So that means the first term plus n minus 1, so n is the number of terms, times d. So d stands for your common difference. So I've seen it, you could also write it like this, a of n equals a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. Just make sure that you're multiplying the d times n minus 1. So we have an explicit formula, which means that you can just plug in any number in for n and get the and get that number at that specific term and we also have a recursive formula so recursive formula you need to have two things you need to always know the first term so you have to fill in this number and you need to know the common difference or how to get the next term so it's going to be a sub n equals a sub n minus one so this means a previous term so, for example, if you had the 6th term, 6 minus 1 is 5, you'd actually need to have the 5th term. And then the common difference, I'm going to add or subtract to get the next number. So I always write plus D because D could be a negative number. So you need two lines for a recursive formula. You have to know what your starting number is, and you have to know how to get your next number from the previous number. So when you're writing any of these formulas, I'm just going to circle, you need to be able to plug in your A1 and your D. Okay, everything else around here stays the same. So, first one, oh, an arithmetic mean, arithmetic mean means that if you have this pattern and it was arithmetic, how do you figure out the number in between? Well, it's actually going to be the average of the two numbers. So to find the average, you just add two numbers up and divide by the number of numbers. So if you add up 5 plus 8, you get 13. And then you have to divide it by 2. So it's 6.5 is the arithmetic mean. Okay, first part. Is the given sequence arithmetic? If so, identify the common difference. Then write an explicit formula for it. So the first one, you are going up by 3. The common difference is 3. So yes, it's arithmetic. D is 3. And then let's look at these formulas up here. We're going to use the explicit formula. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this down in red, A sub n. So to find the nth term, you need to take the first term. So we have to plug in a sub 1, our first term is 7, plus parentheses n minus 1 times d, which is our common difference is 3. So that's our explicit formula. OK, 
Okay, number two. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and do this one. This is actually written in a recursive formula, so I'm going to show you how to figure out what the how to write the terms. So the first term is 7. To get the next term, the second term, you're going to take the previous term and add 4. So 7 plus 4 is 11. To get the next term, you're going to add 4. 11 plus 4 is 15. And then you're going to add 4. So this is definitely arithmetic. So the common difference is 4. And now I'm going to write an explicit formula. So I'm, I don't really have much room here, but my explicit formula is going to be a sub n equals a sub 1, a sub 1 is 7, plus n minus 1 times the common difference, which is 4. So again, I have to keep everything else around here, but I need to plug in my first term and my common difference. It's kind of like plugging in your slope and your y-intercept into y equals mx plus b. Okay, number 3. So you have 3 dots. You have six dots, so this is seven, eight, nine, ten dots. Um, well, already it's not arithmetic because this is adding three and this is adding four. So then it's not an arithmetic sequence because you're not adding the same number. Okay, number four, the, uh, this number, the change between here is negative three. So this is arithmetic. So to write the, arith the explicit formula, you're going to do a sub n equals the first term, which is 48, plus n minus 1 times d, which is negative 3. Okay, number 5. Is this arithmetic? Are we adding or subtracting by the same number every time? No. Okay, 3, 2, 5, there's not even a pattern to that. So no, this one's not arithmetic. So if it's not arithmetic, you don't write a formula for it. Okay, number 6, find the missing term in the arithmetic sequence. This means that you have to find the arithmetic mean. So I'm going to do 50 plus 92 and divide it by 2. If you're doing it on your calculator, make sure you either put 50 plus 92 in parentheses. So put the top part in parentheses. So do 50 plus 92 in parentheses and then divide by 2, and you get 71. So 71 is a number in between here. Number 7, you're going to do 24 plus 57 and divide by 2. So 24 plus 57 in parentheses and divide that by 2 is 40.5. Okay, number 8. Write an expression that shows the arithmetic mean of a4, a, the fourth term, and the sixth term. That's what that means. So we're actually trying to find the fifth term. So to find that t number in between the fourth term and the sixth term, what you're going to do is you're going to find the arithmetic mean. So you're going to add up the fourth term plus the sixth term and then divide by 2. That's the expression. Number nine, use the explicit formula to find the 25th term. So first we have to write an explicit formula. So I can tell that this is going up by six. So my D is six. I know the first term is five. So I'm gonna use the explicit formula, a sub n equals the first term, which is five plus n minus one times six. So now we're trying to find the 25th term. So I'm going to find a sub 25. So that means that you just have to plug in 25 for n. So a sub 25 equals 5 plus 25 minus 1 times 6. So I just plug this into my calculator. 5 plus parentheses. 25 minus 1 times 6. And I get 149. So the 25th term is 149. Okay, number 10. Generate the first five terms of the sequence. So what are the first five terms of the sequence? Well, we know that a sub 1 is 5. And then to get the next term, the nth term, you have to take the previous term and add 6. So we're just going to add 6 to 5. Then you're going to add 6 again, because that's the pattern. 
Then you're going to add 6 again. 17 plus 6 is 23. Then you're going to add 6 again. 23 plus 6 is 29. So those are the first five terms of the sequence. Okay, write the first five terms of the sequence. So that means that I'm going to plug in 1 to find a sub 1. I'm going to plug in a sub 2, 2 to find a sub 2, 3 to plug in find a sub 4, or 3, 4 to find the fifth term, 5 to find the fifth term. So the first term, plug in 1, what do you get? Well, you get 5. Plug in 2, what do you get? 3 plus 2 times 2 is 7. Plug in 3, 3 plus 2 times 3 is 9. Plug in 4, you get 11. Plug in 5, you get 13. So those are the first five terms of my sequence. 5, 7, 9, 11, 13. So I know that my first term is 5, and my common difference is 2. So if I write an explicit formula, it's going to be a sub n equals a sub 1, which is 5 plus n minus 1 times 2. The recursive formula, remember the recursive formula, you need two lines. So a sub 1 equals 5. And then to get the nth term, you need to take the previous term and then add 2 to it. So make sure you have two lines for that. Number 12. Suppose you have already saved $75 towards the purchase of a new iPad. You plan to save $15 a week. So that's going to be your D. And this is going to be your A1. From money you work at a part-time job. In all, what is the minimum amount you will have saved after 26 weeks? So we're going to find the 26th term of the sequence. So it's going to be A sub 26 equals... The first a sub 1, which is 75, plus n minus 1, well that's 26 minus 1, times d. So we're earning $15 a week. So it's going to be 75 plus 26 minus 1 in parentheses, times 15. So you get $450. Or you have saved $450. And then the last one, so we have the sequence... Our a sub 1 is 4 because it's our first term. Our d is 3. Our explicit formula is going to be a sub n equals a sub 1, which is 4, plus parentheses n minus 1 times d, which is 3. Sometimes I put d in parentheses because it's easier to see that this is multiplication. And then my recursive formula, remember, is two lines. So a sub 1 equals 4. And then to get the nth term, you take the previous term, and then you add 3. 